welcome to your first video lesson from me. Um, today we're going to talk about calorimetry. We've talked about it a little bit already. We've talked about our stylish and amazing coffee cup calorimeters. And um, when we work on calorimetry problems, we need to make a couple of assumptions. We make the assumption that we are not losing heat um, or energy isn't being transferred between our calorimeter and the environment. We're also making an assumption that whatever we've got in our calorimeter, our solution in here, is not doing any energy transfer with the coffee cup or with the thermometer. And we're also going to assume that if we have some kind of solution, so maybe like a hydrochloric acid solution or a sodium hydroxide solution, um, that we can treat those solutions as if they are pure water. So that is that um, the C value will be what it would be um, if it were pure water. If we make those um, assumptions um, before we start, then we can say the, the thermal energy, energy that's released by our system is equal to the thermal energy gained by the surroundings. You gotta love that handwriting. Um, so on page 301 in your text, you will see this in a nice blue box near the bottom. So the thermal energy released by the system is equal to the thermal energy gained by the surroundings if we make these assumptions. That's just our little intro. So um, think about that and we'll keep it in mind when we work on these problems. Um, the most important thing to setting up a calorimetry problem is, is to make sure that we've identified what is our system and what is our surroundings. So if we take a look at this example here, it says we've got 10 grams of urea. Urea is just a salt, okay? We're going to take it and we're going to dissolve it in some water. There's the beautiful water. And inside a calorimeter, so a nice little coffee cup. So maybe perhaps I should make that look like a little coffee cup. And um, when we dissolve 10 grams of urea in the water, we observe a temperature change from 20.4 degrees Celsius to 16.7 degrees Celsius. And we are being asked, what is the molar enthalpy of solution for urea? Now, that should have a little question mark. Um, so that means we are looking for this value. If we dissolve one mole of urea, what is the change in enthalpy associ associated with that? So the units are going to be in joules or kilojoules per mole. That's what we're trying to find. What's the molar enthalpy of solution for urea? So before we go any further, it's important that you think carefully about what is our system and what are the surroundings. And we want to keep a separation between those two um, in our minds. Um, so the system is the chemical system that's undergoing the transformation. So in this case, it's urea. Urea. Uh, solid urea is being dissolved. So solid urea is undergoing a transformation into aqueous urea. So that's what's going on in our system. That's the process that's happening that's causing there to be some kind of energy change. Um, the surroundings are the water um, that are inside that's inside the calorimeter. So the water molecules inside the calorimeter aren't participating um, directly in this change. They're not um, of course they're they're present and so th um, there will be forces um, in between water molecules and between water molecules and urea molecules that are involved in this transformation but the vast majority of the water that's inside here is just water. 10 grams um, is a fairly small amount, so we're going to call this a dilute solution. And We've got mostly water in here. We're monitoring its temperature change, and water is acting sort of as a venue or the surroundings for this transformation. Um, so information that we know, we have 10.0 grams of urea that's undergoing the transformation. Um, the volume of water we have is 150 milliliters. And we know our temperature change for water, 16.7 degrees Celsius uh, minus 20.4 degrees Celsius equals 
is negative 3.7 degrees Celsius. Not very pretty. 3.7, 3.7. There we go. Um, so we know the volume of water, we know the temperature change. We're going to assume um, that the density of water is 1. So we also know that the mass is 150 grams of water. Um, we also know a C value for water, 4.19 joules per gram degree Celsius. Um, so we know quite a bit about the water. Looking back at our system at the urea dissolving, um, we were given the molar mass for urea as part of the question and we know what the mass is because so we could figure out how many moles of urea we have and this number that we're actually looking for is associated with urea so we're looking for this value um, how much energy what energy change is associated with one mole of urea dissolving that's a property of urea so that has to do with our system so We've discussed molar enthalpy values and how if you know the amount of energy associated with a certain particular change and you know how many moles were involved, um, you can get a value that's in joules per mole or kilojoules per mole, de depending on the um, magnitude of the energy change, I guess. And so we can use this equation to find our answer because we could find the number of moles, um, but what we need in order to answer the question is this. Okay, so delta HR in this case is the energy change associated with the 10 grams of urea dissolving in water. So we can tell by our temperature change um, of the water over here, this minus 3.7 degrees, the water got cooler. It started off around 20, it ended up around 17, so the water's cooling off. That means there's a flow of energy from the surroundings into our system. Energy's being um, transferred in that direction. So I guess right to left in this case, but um, whatever you set up is what you've set up. So if we calculate Q over here, which we could, because we know M and C and delta T, <coughs> This Q value, so the amount of energy um, that was released or taken out of the water, has been input into the system. And that's going to be this value over here. So these are the two values that relate your system to your surroundings. They're going to have opposite signs. So if we're actually going to set them equal and we want to be um, correct with our signage, we'll make one of them negative because they will be the same magnitude but one will be an endothermic and one will be an exothermic um, change. One is going to lose and one's going to gain um, energy. So this is how we want to make sure we define things. We sketch out a plan kind of like this. We're going to see what we know, see what we need to find. In this case, if we can calculate Q, Q will give us our um, the heat associated with this particular reaction and we can use that to calculate our molar enthalpy of solution. So let's just go back over here for a minute. Uh, so Q is going to be 150 grams times 4.19 joules per gram degrees Celsius times minus 3.7 degrees Celsius. <laughs> I'm going off a page a little there. Whoop. Maybe that's better. And let's see, what, what do we get for that value? Um, so negative 2,325 joules. Keeping in mind significant digits, we only have a couple over here. So we've only got a couple in this answer. Um, but I'm, I'm going to leave it for now and not round it. So if this is our Q value, if the water is losing, because it's a negative sign, 2,325 joules, that means the amount of energy that's being gained by our system um, we'll have the same magnitude with the opposite sign. So delta HR is going to be equal to 2,325 joules, give or take a few. And that's one num value that we need. We also need to know the number of moles. Moles is mass divided by molar mass. And the molar mass was given in the question. So you can work that out, but it, it's about 0.166 moles of urea that we have. So we can actually calculate the value that we're looking for. 
So the delta H of the solution is going to be equal to 2325 joules per 0.166 moles. So we only dissolve 10 grams. 10 grams is much less um, than a mole, about one-sixth of a mole. And so we need to make sure we take that into account. This isn't how many um, joules for one mole, it's how many joules for 10 grams. Um, if we do this division, we get about 14,000 joules. And keeping in mind significant digits, we could just call that 14 kilojoules. Um, and that's per mole. Okay. <clears throat> so very, very important to organize your thoughts. I strongly encourage you to think it out in your mind. What is your system and what is your surroundings? These are the going to be the values that relate one to another, but you must be able to identify what you're looking for in the question and what your given information is so that you can come up with some kind of appropriate um, strategy to get you to the right answer. So that's sort of a nice first example. Just going to check, whoops, I'm going to check on the time here. How am I doing? What's 672 seconds? 672. Hmm. Alright, I'm going to cut myself off there, and maybe I'll do another one in a minute.